Welcome back to Late Night. We're here with Senator Bernie Sanders. You've always been incredibly consistent with your political views, and it was resurfaced this year around New Year's that in 1978, your local newspaper was asking people for their New Year's resolutions. And in 1978, we can take a look at it here. Uh, you were still very focused on things like wage inequality and uh, you know people on the bottom of the economic ladder uh, getting their fair shake. So this has been something that has been uh, true of you uh, through every, I would imagine, uh, New Year's resolution cycle. Well, Seth, you know, I came from a family that did not have a lot of money. We lived in a rent-controlled apartment, and I try very hard not to forget where I came from. You uh, recently uh, gave an interview with The Guardian where you echoed what you believed in 1978 about the need for the Democratic Party to reconnect with working-class voters. Why is it do you feel that it has been so hard to make that connection stronger in recent years? Well, look, here is the reality, and it's a reality that just is not talked about very much in the corporate media or talked about you know, in, in the political uh, process. And that is, we are moving toward an oligarchy. Now, do you hear many people talking about that, Seth? Not every now and then I, I try don't... to bring it up. <laughs> but, you know, it just... And that means that you're looking at a, a very small number of billionaires, a few hundred billionaires, who exercise unbelievable control over the economic and political life of this country. And these guys are becoming phenomenally richer. The rich today in America are better off than the rich have ever been in the history of this country. That's one reality. And the other reality is you got half of our people living paycheck to paycheck. People are going to work today, putting their lives on the line because they you know, may get exposed uh, to COVID because they got to feed their kids. Uh, we have 90 million people who have no health insurance or are underinsured. You've got families that can't afford childcare. You've got older workers who have nothing in the bank as they face retirement. That is the economic reality facing America. And because of the power of money and campaign contributions, those needs of working people have been long neglected. Now, I think we are making under President Biden and under the Democratic Congress some steps forward, some progress on that. The American the rescue plan was extraordinarily important in protecting the needs of working people. The infrastructure bill we passed is going to create hundreds of thousands of good-paying jobs. But at the end of the day, the Democratic Party, you know, the Republican Party has become a right-wing extremist party. It represents the wealthy. It represents the powerful. Fine, I accept that. But what the Democratic Party has got to do is to make it clear which side are they on. You remember that old Union folk song, which side are you on? And yeah, it was a, that I is played it a lot in high school. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should continue to play it because that is the very simple and most profound political question there is. Which side are you on? Yeah, we could disagree about nuance. Are you prepared to stand with struggling working families all over this country? And are you, you prepared to take on big money interest? That is the question. We have seen, you know, some organized labor win some victories in, in recent months. Uh, John Deere, you were recently in Michigan for a Kellogg Kellogg's. strike. Some uh, nurses have won some victories. Do you see this? as a positive move in the right direction or just Absolutely. very small victories? Absolutely. No, I think what you're seeing, and young people at Starbucks in, in, in Buffalo, New York, became the first Starbucks coffee shop to be unionized. Uh, you are seeing all over this country with incredible courage, working people standing up and saying to their very powerful and wealthy owners, you know what? You're not going to take away our health care. You know what? We deserve decent wages. We deserve decent pen pensions. And you are seeing working people all over this country standing up and fighting back. And to me, that is just extraordinarily uh, impressive, inspirational. And I think it's something that we have all got to uh, support. We're involved right now in three strikes uh, in West Virginia in Alabama and California, where you have brave, incredibly brave people out on strike right now without any health care, uh, without any wages coming in. 
uh, taking on powerful special interests. So I think that is a, a, um, an indication of the frustration that many workers are feeling around this country and their preparedness to stand up and fight back. And that's a great thing. When you are at these strikes, particularly when they're in red, straight, uh, red states, excuse me, like Alabama that you mentioned, are you uh, cognizant of, or, or do you feel it's true that maybe a lot of the people that you are there uh, fighting for are not uh, Bernie Sanders supporters or even Democratic voters? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, I happen to believe that with the, if you make it clear to working people, whether you're in Alabama, California, or any place else, that you are prepared to stand up and fight for their interests, that you have the guts to tell the pharmaceutical industry, you're not gonna charge us 10 times more for a drug than they do in Canada. That you're gonna fight for healthcare for all as a human right, that you're gonna create jobs which pay at least $15 an hour, minimum wage that we need. See, I happen to believe that the Republican success in these red states among working people is not anything that they have done per se. It's not that in red states, people believe in tax breaks for billionaires or throwing millions of people off of health insurance or that people in red states want to do as Mitch McConnell does, cut social security, Medicare and Medicaid. I think the reason those states have gone red is that people are looking at the Democratic Party and saying, we don't believe you, we don't trust you. You're really not fighting for us. And then there are reasons why they, they go toward the Republicans. So when I go to those states and I say, you know what, you're entitled to decent wages and decent benefits, that health care is a human right, that your kids have a right to go to college, that you shouldn't be ripped off by the pharmaceutical industry, people nod their heads and they say, yeah, you're right, Bernie. No different in those states than in any you know, Vermont or any other state. Well, thank you as always for making time for us. When you're out on those picket lines, make sure you bundle up. I know you're very good at it, but I do, you know, I'm still concerned. <laughs> Okay, Seth, thanks very much. Keep up the great work. All right, thank you so much for being with us, Senator.